Yeah, so welcome everyone who's joining now. We are getting more and more people here. What quality is your glass? It is a staple candle glass, uh, or can you paint on any glass? So this is a glass that is actually meant to be a candle glass, which means that the, the glass is quite uh, strong. I have tried to burn um, other types of glass, and that's just completely melted in my kiln. Uh, I can paint most glass, but if it's too thin, it, it might melt. <laughs> so you can't just paint on absolutely anything, but uh, most, I, I believe. I like your paintings. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Isaac. How was your last launch of the shop going and your holiday? So the launch, last launch went really well. Um, and yeah, right after that, we went on our holiday um, up to... Well, I'm not going to tell you guys too much. Um, we went up to the northern parts of Norway. We already said as much. But uh, there's going to be quite a bit of that in Lena's next video. And I don't want to give too much away. Uh, but I can just uh, yeah say it was it was really wonderful. And we got to experience uh, even more northerly parts of, uh, of Norway. And that was really beautiful. <laughs> now I'm uh, emojiing with a big yawny face. Well, if you want excitement, I don't think this is the place to be, Dahan. This is more the opposite. This is the place you come when you have been too excited uh, from different things, and uh, you need a break from that. Uh, if you <laughs> want more excitement, you probably need to go somewhere else. Are you displaying your product somewhere or just online selling? So it's just online selling for now. And we'll see how it goes eventually if there's going to be uh, somewhere where I can display it. But uh, now it's just online at the moment. Happy to hear Elizabeth says, yeah, uh, it was a really good vacation. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well, if you're going to yawn, <laughs> then it's probably not the same place. Or some people, I think, have used these uh, live streams uh, to fall asleep, which is quite all right. <laughs> That, that's that's fine too. You're allowed to watch it and then use it to for self-soothing and, and sleep assistance. I think it's something with my voice too. Um, I used to, if I read aloud in class, after a little while I would actually start to hear snoring. I figure there are more than enough uh, terribly exciting things in this world, so... This is my contribution to the, yeah, the, 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 the calmer parts of the internet. And I think there are probably limits as to how much more exciting I can make this. Because this is, um, probably if I start a new painting, for instance, it can be a bit more exciting. But, oh well. Paintings are soothing, Isaac said. Yes, uh, I, I think so too. And I am very impressed that so many people actually managed to follow along for such a long time with these uh, very, very, very slow paintings. Could you talk about this art club you're in? Sure. And I mean, the one in which you publicize pictures. I find it an amazing idea. I really appreciate it, Lisa. Yeah, of course I can. Um, yeah, so it, it's a local art club. We met the owners here from the a little house. Uh, uh, they, are, they basically they have a little cabin uh, and um, the neighbor house. And they invited me to take part in the, in the local painting club. And uh, I just thought it's such a wonderful thing to have um, people there. They have, uh, one of them, the woman Karin Elsta, has been painting for 40 years. And then, um, if possible, uh, to help them get a bit more known in the world, too. Um, and then kind of, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a wonderful place to just uh, stay and uh, to chat and paint. And, um, I mean, some of them might want to 
actually become more professional at some point too and then it's possible to kind of pool knowledge and and so on hi Aaron. is it snow i see through your window yes that is snow absolutely it's we had a little bit of spring and now winter is back uh so yeah the the painting i th i have lots and lots of different uh, ideas for how we can kind of i mean most a lot of people who paint i mean i know that for myself an artist uh, one of the biggest problems is just to get seen uh, so many people make incredibly wonderful things but uh, no one sees uh, what they do and i always thought as a young painter that if i just got good enough someone would start buying it but of course if no one sees it um well that's not gonna happen uh, so then my hope is that it's possible to kind of pool visibility and kind of help each other get get seen out in the world so maybe that's something we can do with the local painting club so we started an instagram site and uh, i am operating it together with uh, karin who founded the club and uh, yeah, let's just see. So everyone, if you, if you want to take a look at the local painting club there, I'm going to try to make it a little bit into a world so that you can kind of get a little bit of a feeling how it is to live far off in Norway in the little town up in the mountains and, and paint. Uh, yeah, I used to make paintings, but took a long break from it. I really want to resume with new art form. Any ideas? Uh, so you mean with a new art form, you mean painting or just a different, uh, uh, something completely different to do, so not painting anymore? Could you give me a little bit more specifics? But I am sure I have ideas there. So what I really wanted, uh, so for instance in the local painting club, it's possible to kind of have a little... In the summer, maybe to have a little gallery and people can come and maybe we'll have a little... They have, we have a little... Uh, online store attached to it and uh, it, it can kind of be a springboard either just as a hobby painter or actually to start selling things and become more professional and I I would dearly have hoped for something like that when I was starting out and if I can contribute in any way and then I get a community back so that's wonderful related to paintings or craft but do you want to paint uh, at all or do you want to do something uh, else than painting so for instance I mean glass painting and porcelain painting I found were wonderful uh, additions to paint. So it's different, but you're painting on something more practical, for instance, than just to paint uh, paintings on canvas. That's one thing. Um, I always like to make things out of uh, clay and so on. So of course, ceramics and uh, or porcelain is wonderful. And then you can combine that with painting on it. Um, sometimes it's uh, just a good thing to try to uh, change what kind of medium you use for painting or what you're painting on. So it's possible to you can paint on wood, for instance, which is quite different, but you can use lots of the same skills that you have for other kinds of painting. Uh, yeah, I think those are kind of my, my, my first ideas. Um... Yeah, so what I really wanted to try to see if we can manage with this uh, paint. <laughs> Hello, Katja. Welcome to the to the stream. Hello again from the Netherlands. I, uh, I want to take it up as professionally on the side. I want to feel empowered with creative art. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, exactly. Well, so one of the ways that uh, I managed to make the leap to being more professional was exactly that, to expand, uh, because... Uh, at least for now my market hasn't been big enough to just have um, paintings I needed to paint for instance like this on glass and sell that because there's a bigger market for that and um, so to branch out is definitely a good idea and you can make money either on the side or then take it um, even more professional at some point um, so you find your way of painting or, or your your expression and then try it out on different mediums and on different things and then kind of see what catches on i mean one of the reasons i think why um glass painting has been just such a staple for my shop is that people have lots of space and it's a it's an easy gift and and artwork uh, a big painting is not that easy you can't give it away as easily it's more expensive people don't have room on their wall 
And maybe we can connect and see if we can do something together, maybe. Well, you can send me a direct mail, but I do get um, quite a few questions about these things. Um, and I can't make any promises, but I can I can make some ideas, of course. And you can take a look at what I do and uh, get inspired. Uh, absolutely. Or, of course, you can move to this little uh, place here and be part of the art club. <laughs> so I do want to do things like that, but I think I'm not going to do as much online as uh, because i mean that's the um, my job is a lot online and i really like the fact that uh, the painting club now is actually an actual club and it's not online because I, I do need that too so i really appreciate for instance this community here but i'm so glad to um, have an actual community out there as well yes your work is inspiring thank you isaac how is the family doing? Who makes your wooden books? I hope that they are well under circumstances and safe. Yeah, well, so they are in Kiev, uh, believe it or not, and uh, in the Ukraine. And they're actually starting to sell books again. Uh, we don't know much more than that. Um, but it seems like they are safe. And now that it's getting a bit safer in Kiev again, it seems like they have started to... Um, to start a production and started selling again. So I'm, I'm so happy that uh, that it, it went okay and that everything is okay with them. So for those of you who don't know, the wooden books that I paint on are actually created by a little family firm in Kiev, uh, in the Ukraine. And so naturally they had to close for quite a while. But now, uh, thank thankfully, uh, they managed to uh, start up again. Um, not entirely sure how that shipped out and how postal work, how it works, or if they've kind of relocated to a new city. But um, yeah, they they've started up again. Um, so uh, thankfully, it seemed to have gone all right. Uh, it was just it really brought it home um, to me to see that that they were affected by this too. It it makes it much more uh, local. And the books that they make, I just find them so wonderful and beautiful. It was just such a shame that uh, that was threatened. <laughs> Goosebumps, Elizabeth says, yeah, absolutely. That would, uh, it, yeah, it really, really brought the situation home. How do you cope with moments of being unsure of your work, the difficult moments of your art in general? Oh, well, <laughs> um, so there have, of course, there have been uh, lots of moments like that. Um, I've dealt with that in very different ways regarding on how my life was at the moment uh, of doubt. So uh, at the moment, I don't have many moments like that anymore. Uh, it's kind of stable for the moment. I'm sure there'll be moments again. Um, but, um, and for me, sometimes uh, I, could, I, was, I was quite despairing because it was kind of, it, it, every now and again, it, it seemed obvious that it was just a pipe dream um, and uh, that there was no way to live off of painting landscape art. It, uh, I had moments where I was so sure of myself and I knew that it was going to work and then it just kind of all crashed. Um, but in the end, it's just I've always had way too much enjoyment of doing it. Um, so sometimes when I was sure that there was no way of living off of it, I thankfully I, I kept painting anyway. Um, but I had times where I uh, almost stopped painting for extended moments. So now if there's any... Well, I think... Uh, after a while, I've kind of, I know what you mean, kind of being unsure of if the thing that you do, for instance, makes any sense and so on. Um, and I've really stuck with what I like to do. 
and just kind of um, I did have a few times where I almost went in other directions and tried to figure out what 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 are what do people want? Should I paint any animals or farms or anything into my paintings? But I'm really glad that I didn't do that, um, and I stuck with painting what I enjoy. And I think that might be. Um, the main thing that I can I can say I mean I can't say that I have never had doubt nor can I say that I dealt with it particularly well but um, but if you if it if it's really something you kind of enjoy to such an extent that it you kind of have to do it um, then I think that's 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 one of it just kind of um, focusing on the joy that it gives you instead of what everyone else might think of it. I always knew, for some reason it might not, <laughs> it, it, I just knew that it was going to get better and to the point where I was going to be happy with it even before it, it was any good at all. So maybe that's uh, one way of doing it too. It's just this, if you feel that it's not good enough or you're not, painting it in the way that you want uh, know that it's that's that's kind of a part of it that it's going to get there and uh, you have to go through that too that was a very long answer to the question but it's <laughs> some something obviously that i've thought quite a bit about how open or shy have you been in those times in relation with other people did you talk about your dreams and your situation I'm quite shy about it. I kind of hate talking with people I don't trust. I uh, get that. So uh, it's been uh, very much both. Um, sometimes I was really, really open and told everyone about my dreams. And then afterwards, sometimes I could um, <laughs> really, really hate myself for being that open. Because obviously, if you talk to people that might not understand and so on, it can be quite hurtful too. So I've been both. Uh, sometimes I've loved and shouted about it on the rooftops and at other times I just didn't want to see anyone and kind of hid myself in my little room and wished that the world would just go away. So I, I know both uh, signs really well. Um, so I, I can relate with absolutely with both of that. Hi from Lubeck. Hi Andreas. Uh, welcome to the stream. Yeah, so I absolutely... Uh, it's um, It can be really, really good to share these ideas into the world but um, it does have to come from a place of you kind of you're sure of yourself because you're going to meet quite a lot of people that just don't understand and that's I mean uh, understandable I think uh, that not everyone is going to understand why and maybe it's I mean a lot of the times I shared things I share them before it looked the way it had to look to be successful. And then of course people are not going to understand. So they're going to say, well, you can't really live off that, my God. But that wasn't what I wanted to say. I wanted to say that I'm going to live off this just when it's much, much better. <laughs> um, so it's difficult. It can be really good to share. Uh, it can be really good to get it out in the world. And it kind of... Um... Hello, Shreyash. Uh, welcome to the stream. It can kind of give you a little kick too. But yeah, I... It depends on where you are emotionally, I think. Be careful with yourself and share when you feel strong enough. Um, find some people that you're really comfortable with and you can share it with them. And at other times, you might feel ready even to share it with people that won't understand. Uh, so yeah, I, I've, had, uh, I've had both, both of that. And just know that, I mean, these creative things, uh, there are so many people that just, they're just not going to get it. Uh, but they'll get it once you're managing to, to, to live off of it <laughs> and so on. And just, yeah, and patience. How did you deal with it? If you don't mind sharing. No, not at all. Uh, I feel, what do you do for a living? Oh, yeah, that's one of the number one small talk questions. But for me, it's not. So I avoid and that stuff. Oh, yes, I know. Finally, I'm doing a live session after a very long time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I remember I um, I went on, on, on welfare for a while too, from the state. And if you're on welfare, um, then the worst question in the world is what do you do for a living? Because that's kind of, you don't want to answer it. Um, that's very, very difficult. Everyone has to kind of figure out their own way of, of, of dealing with that. Um, 
and I mean, sometimes you can share your dreams, of course. Um, but some, just being honest about it, it, it can really help too. Just say, I, I, it, I would like to do this and this, but right now it's just crap. Uh, sometimes that could be very free too. Um, so it's very, very difficult. I, I knew I had times where I didn't really want to go out on the street because I didn't want to get that question. Because I knew I wanted to be a painter, but I wasn't a painter, so I couldn't say that. Um, but I think... Um, yeah, I have no easy answer to that. I mean, a lot of... I, I know that. I know that so well. This... Oh, please don't ask me what I'm doing. <laughs> because what I'm doing right now isn't me. Um, I think we just, as a culture, we just have to figure out better ways of asking... And kind of, um, and know that if you're on welfare or unemployed at the moment, that doesn't reflect who you are. We've all been through it. Beautiful painting, <laughs> Dimon says. Ah, thank you. By the way, how are you? I am good. Uh, so as I've been talking a little bit about, I just joined a local painting club, which I really think is really fun. Which means that I now have more people that um, that paint. And as you saw in my last post. And yeah, so things are, are happening. I can so relate to that. And I more and more think about the liberating, uh, about the liberating wanna, now it's crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I think that might, I mean, just, it feels so crap uh, sometimes being in positions in life that aren't ideal. But I mean, as one thing to think about is how much it helps other people if we are able to talk about it. Thank you for sharing, Joachim. It somehow feels supportive. Well, I hope so. Yeah, I've gone through these things, so... Uh, absolutely. Kind of where I am right now. Unemployed and on welfare. I do try to dance around the what you do for a living question. Oh, yeah. And uh, and it's just... It's crap. I mean, it's it, it would be such a wonderful thing uh, if we didn't have to feel ashamed about that. Uh, and just, well... It's, I mean, welfare, and it's it's just a beautiful, wonderful thing that that exists and that we get the time. If I didn't live in Norway and have this general welfare state, I would never have had the time to do this. I, in America, I probably would have had to work in McDonald's. Um, and nothing against that, but it wouldn't have given me the time to do what I loved to do, which was paint. Uh, so sometimes it can be exactly the right thing. Um and then it's just crap that we have to feel guilty about it. And I don't think we do have to. Um, so if we can all manage to be more open about that, we can all help each other a great deal. Um, because just, just the opportunity to take some time off uh, and not have to go somewhere and work can just it can really be a gift. Um, if it's not uh, together with too much stigma and uh, yeah. So I've decided upon that uh, quite early on to just uh, at least, at least when you're out of it and you feel stronger, uh, do share and do talk about that because it's so important. Now I've gone around here quite a few times, and I'm not entirely sure if there's so much more I can do until it's uh, been in the kiln. So I think actually we're going to have to switch to uh, another uh, another glass. I just have to see what I have here. Oh, thanks for sharing. <laughs> oh, hi, Vivian. Welcome. Oh, Vivian, welcome to the stream. Looks beautiful. Well, thank you. Uh, let's see if I can find a glass that we can continue painting on. I think I have one here where I wanted to do a little bit of the same as I have done here. there. I often find that these kind of contrasting um, things are a bit better. There we are. Uh, so this is just a background that I painted um, a while ago. And uh, so I'd say you can see it better when I put in the candle. 
Vitra Otterman means live differently. Oh, wonderful. Well, welcome to the stream. I fear the critics as well as the envy of other people who are stuck in a job and life they don't like. Is it okay that I talk about this here? Of course, this is uh, exactly the place to talk about these things. Um, I I really like that about these streams, that it, they're just uh, open and informal and a place where you can uh, talk about, uh, well, anything really, uh, with each other, with me. Do you know when you guys will upload a new YouTube video? No, I do not. Uh, there will be one uh, at some point. Uh, but there is no clear date on it. Um, I think that is the that is the answer. Thank you, Joachim. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, 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 and uh, having been through quite a lot of these things myself, with um, not having a job, not uh, knowing uh, what to do, but still really, really wanting to be a creative person, and knowing how difficult that is, that is a very relevant topic for this stream. So, absolutely. That is something we can talk about. It's important for both me and Lena. We don't uh, necessarily show as much of our lives as other YouTubers and other um, people do. But about these kinds of things, we do want to be very open and honest because it uh, just uh, helps everyone. <laughs> it helps us. It helps uh, other people that are going through the similar things. And I often think that, I mean, the times that uh, we are unemployed and we're not, not sure what to do with our lives, those are actually uh, very important moments. And uh, it's very, very stupid that we should feel uh, bad about those at the same time. It's often difficult enough. <laughs> and uh, so I hope that we can have a culture change there. Do you still struggle with it? Well, now I have to admit that I am so pleased uh, where I am in my life that uh, I, I look forward to people asking me <laughs> what I do. So I have to have to be honest about that. I have experienced a lot of it, but at the moment I am very impatient for people to ask me what I do because I'm just I've didn't, I'm just very very proud of it. Um, even if people don't understand, that doesn't bother me one bit. Uh, I, I enjoy it too much, and I'm so happy that I'm finally there, that um, I really look forward to people asking, even if they don't understand what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, thanks. I miss uh, to binge watch. Uh, well, I binge watched Lena's videos a few months ago. You two are so inspiring. Thanks for sharing your beautiful life in a corner of the world. Ah, oh, that's wonderful to hear. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope there will be, uh, and I know there will be lots, lots of more videos for you to binge watch. <laughs> so beautiful, Elizabeth says. Uh, really happy to hear that. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I'm very pleased about that now, too. Um, and I, I really wish I had... Uh, it would have been easier to go through those other times if I just had a little bit more faith that I would get here. <laughs> Maybe on that note, Emma says, also a question, sharing. I've been feeling the burden more lately of not being employed, wanting to find a job, not really knowing where to find the job that suits me. Ah, yes. Or I have to find a way to make a living. There's a pressure to do something else, but I enjoy where I am as well. Yeah, that is that is diff difficult. Um, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I, it's so important, I think, not to fall into doing something that you don't you're not meant to do just because you feel a pressure to do something uh, so to actually just take that time and actually figure things out and it's always going to feel longer i mean often it's like that the first kind of month or something everyone is just yeah of course take the time and so on and then after a few months um read Carlos ebook <laughs> absolutely so uh, uh, i can recommend Carlos routine's ebook too um, so after a few months, people or years, people get impatient and say, oh, you should really be doing something and so on. And I often find that a society environment just it's just not giving us enough time. There's very little understanding that things just take much more time 
than we have often given. Uh, that's very true for unemployment uh, benefits and so on too, that are kind of designed in such a way that you have to feel the pressure to, to get a job. And often it doesn't give us the time that we need to actually figure things out because that takes always oh, takes much more time than than we think at first. Um, I think that's that's kind of the main thing that I get to kind of say to to anyone who's unemployed. That there's there's really just there's no shame in in having time and not knowing and figuring things out. And then of course there's going to be um, less money uh, often, which is diff difficult. But then, for instance, yeah, I mean, doing something like uh, moving to the countryside for a little while or renting a very cheap place in the forest or something is, is, is one way of dealing with it. Um, and yeah, I mean, there are so many different uh, um, <laughs> well, what am I trying to say? Um, situations in life, of course, I can't speak to all of them, but uh, but yeah, we, we do need a society that is more okay with not uh, knowing exactly what to do or being in, in a job um, and so on. I think it would just be so much better if a lot of us took much more time to try to figure out what we should actually be doing instead of um, doing something for the sake of doing something. I think a lot know that that kind of relief when you've kind of gotten a job, even if a job you hate, just to be able to say that I'm doing this and this, but that's that's not 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 a good thing. Also, this society makes you believe that having a job is the most important thing. They force uh, us to need one in this society that way. They make too much money from us, but. Yeah, I agree to that. Uh, it, it does feel that way. Um, but that you were born is enough. Just live your best and be kind. Yeah, there are a lot of things that are more important than uh, than, than having uh, uh, a job. Glad I stumbled on your stream today, Joachim. I think I needed to hear this. And third time I hear something about Kala's ebook, so maybe it's time to go check it out. Absolutely do that. It's very practical, too, I find, Kala's book. Uh, so it really... Especially in that situation where you find yourself now, I actually do think that that it could be a really uh, very it, it can be very inspiring, and you can be a little part of the little community and so on. So I think I think that's actually a really good thing. Um, yeah, this I mean this job focus is really it's 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 a problem. Especially since we at some point surely we do need people to actually work less, um, <laughs> so. Uh, it, it's going to have to change, I think. I have to go, but I enjoyed here. I hope Lena is fine, how <laughs> she is, and that Ivy can have a nap on the couch. Oh, he does. Well, uh, thank you for joining, and uh, till next time, Agata. Thank you for joining. There's just, um, I mean, it uh, would be, s I think I find that with a lot of actually uh, people that are going into um, retirement because they, uh, it's kind of a state sanctioned leave of <laughs> you're kind of, you're allowed to, to not work. And then often people just find the freedom to do things. Of course, some people just kind of fall asleep, but for some people it can just really be uh, a freedom. And it's a shame that we have to wait until we're 70 to get there. For me, it's always been about internal development, less than outside accomplishments. So I feel that I've accomplished a lot over the year, but I feel a pressure from the outside world that doesn't seem to see that. Yeah, I get that. Uh, and, do, and do find an environment where people understand that, because there are more and more people these days that do think that way too. And um, that, that don't really applaud any job or accomplishment. Actually, there are more and more people that uh, are skeptical to that way of thinking. Uh, so I think yeah, there, there are a lot more people that think the same way than you might be aware of. 
I only watched Lena's new video a few days ago, shame on me. And I noticed you're into Lord of the Rings as well. Oh, absolutely. I could have known you're too similar to me. Yeah, we really love Lord of the Rings. Just these worlds, you know. I mean, that's what both of us are doing, is uh, creating worlds. And I think that's one of the wonderful things with the, with the books and the movies. And Lord of the Rings is just this, this incredible world that they've created there. Um, so absolutely. Every one of my friends who started full-time jobs are deeply unhappy now and very much out of connections with themselves. Yeah, I can understand that. It's, uh... I have to admit, I've never actually had a full-time job myself. Um, but even the part-time jobs I had, uh, and some of them I kind of liked, but uh, having them full-time would have been a nightmare. I am sure that there are people that really love their jobs, but and even their full-time jobs. But um, uh, a lot more people that just uh, really don't. Of course, I do have this as a full-time job now. But yeah, it's about finding that thing that you can actually survive doing full-time. Like you do now. <laughs> yes, exactly. To the outside world, we're nobodies. They want us to be the same. They use us as little workmen, exploit us for... Oh, <laughs> that is very... <laughs> keep shining. And here, see... Well, I, I, I know, I know, I know the sentiment, but uh, people aren't that bad. I mean, these systems, this world does kind of force us into these things, but I don't think most people would want that world, and hopefully we can create something else. Lord of the Rings, yes. My daughter's names are Arvin, Adriana, and Christiana. She listens to Adira and my son's names. Yes, I uh, name it up my Tolkien Iskander. Watching you paint is very relaxing. I must say it makes me think of ASMR videos. Ah, yeah. I am familiar with those. You could do a video when we watch your paintings coming to life. Well, I suppose this is, is, is that kind of... Yeah, I think I think we need more of that kind of content too. I mean, there are so many exciting things, which is good, but we need to calm down. And if I can contribute, that's a good thing. I love my full-time job. Well, that is very good to hear. Yeah, so it's just uh, finding what, what, what you want to do. And if that's a full-time job at McDonald's, that's that's fine. It's as long as it's kind of, it's a, it's a voluntary thing um, that gives you joy. That, that that's it. I think uh, there is the other way too, which some people feel um, if they're more in the world that kind of I inhabit, where people find a pressure to be creative and do something that find their passion. And maybe they don't have a passion. Maybe their passion is just uh, when they're done with job, with their job to be finished with it and then go out with friends. Um, so it can be all kinds of things as long as it's something that feels right to you. It does, we, we don't all have to be creative workers. <laughs> it's great that you can make a living from your passion. I've never worked, lived from social benefits, but I'm so ready to be independent from this fucked up government. Uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's what I've, uh, for me too, I'm really happy that there is a really good welfare system in Norway, but um, I am really happy to uh, have gotten off of it too so it's um yeah it should be a means to an end to find kind of yeah to f to find your way to to survive i'm not sure in which country you you live of course there are very very different um social safety nets some of them are quite oppressive and awful i mean even the one in norway is um 
they don't make you feel very good about yourself. That is very true. Uh, and really, I'm really a big fan of this, that, that, that it exists, but not necessarily in the way it does. I studied for a very long time uh, and used that time to learn painting instead. Um, so kind of, yeah, I suppose I worked the system. <laughs> it's, uh, well, I, I do wish there was an easier way, but uh, that's the way I did it. But yeah, I can absolutely heartily re recommend uh, Carla Flodin's uh, uh, ebook. That is, it's very inspiring, and it is a, exactly about that. And I think it's a bit even more relevant because, I mean, what I do is a bit unique to me, uh, not necessarily, of course. But uh, I think what he, the way he describes it, it's it's uh, more broadly relevant. Have your parents been supportive? If that's not too private question, no, 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 that's, that's um, not too private, that's fine. They have been incredibly supportive. Uh, my parents are artists um, themselves. So um, uh, so from my parents' side, that has not been a problem. It is, it's always been more of a societal thing. Um, but my parents are uh, very, very supportive for me going this way. Um, it's what they wanted to do themselves. Are you going to write a book as well as Kala has? I think I am probably not. Uh, Lena might at some point. Um, uh, that's way down the line, though. Um, I've done so much uh, writing in my politics study and figured out that that is not something I like to do. Um, no, I think uh, more more with these live streams and figuring out how to how to get that further. Thanks for chatting with us. I am happy I got the chance to speak with you a bit. I have to go. Well, thank you for joining, and uh, hopefully you'll join us next time. Wow, cool. <laughs> what kind of artists are there? So my father uh, is a sculptor. So he's struggled with this too. So he had to do lots of jobs that he hated, um, and he always wanted to live off of that, but he couldn't. But he's a sculptor, and my mother um, has done a lot of... Uh, so she's a children's magician, and uh, dad did a lot of uh, kind of theater things and um, eventually ended up, yeah, uh, being a, a teacher, a, a, a children's magician. Uh, so not in the creative arts, but uh, I would say in the world of artists, uh, absolutely. I'm looking into the ebook, but that's a, <laughs> a bit apprehensive still. It's quite expensive. I'll think of it, absolutely. Could you maybe talk a little bit more about it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's uh, he basically did. It's basically a guide to how to kind of live um, an independent life and a little bit how to go about it. Uh, he has some journal exercises and kind of how to figure out what to what your passion is. Um, so I think he. Um, and uh, and there's a little community part of it too, not not that not that little actually. So people can kind of join a, a chat group and support each other uh, in that in that. So you get access to. I'm not entirely sure. You have to look at his web page, but you get access to a community basically, that are all interested in the same in living. A, so he calls it uh, living a life you don't have to take a vacation from. Uh, and uh, it's kind of mixed in with simple living and um, a little bit of the things that we've been talking about. If I can afford it, um, I'm sure uh, you can as well. It's like an investment from the future. Well, you can squirrel a, uh, a bit of money away each month and at some point maybe it'll call to you. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's the best way to describe it. It's kind of, he, he basically made a little guidebook of to how to live a different life basically and i think a lot of it is just it's uh, very inspiring because if we find ourselves in the situation that uh, you describe and that i know so well uh, one of the 
biggest problems is often feeling completely alone. Um, feeling uh, like you're not a part of the bigger world and not being able to talk to other people and everyone is busy doing what you ought to be doing and so on. So it can be incredibly empowering just to know that there are other people that think in the same way. Uh, and I think that's one of the benefits of it. I mean, like we do here right now. So just, uh, yeah, knowing that you're not, you're not alone and, uh, and you don't have to rejoin that society, basically. Um, it is possible to do things uh, completely differently, even if everyone you know around you think you're crazy. And then seeing people who have who think that way and have uh, made a living out of it can just be a tremendous help. actually think that if I, if I'm going to put this up on YouTube later and I might actually cut to this part where we talk about this. The beginning was really slow, which is meditative, but uh, I think this is actually quite helpful. I think this is a conversation that we just really need to have a lot more of in our society and uh, question a lot of the assumptions um, that uh, are going. And I mean, this is happening a lot of places, but it's really important for people that feel alone with these questions because that can be quite uh, quite dangerous to feel that isolated it's one of the more dangerous things we we, we experience as humans is uh, isolation because we're really just we're not made for it and then sometimes you feel compelled to go back to worlds that just aren't aren't any good for you so i think these yeah creating these connections are it's incredibly important Um, uh, maybe my blog is going to be helpful. And there's a, a link. <laughs> I'm so thankful you guys are talking about this here. I needed to hear that, Judith says. Oh, well, that's good. I'm glad. Yeah, I think this is a really important uh, important topic. We can talk much, much more about it in this stream and in other streams. Um, having gone through so much of this myself. Um, I feel like a lot of those things in our society come from fear and survival mode. Oh, absolutely. Money, stability, risk for security and familiarity. So it became all rigid and stagnant. Yeah, I agree. A, a lot of this just comes from fear. So I don't think people are being mean. It's not... I mean, a lot of the people that told me not to uh, follow this uh, particular way of doing things, this dream, they would all have been supportive if they knew I could live off of it. Uh, they were just afraid. Um that it wasn't possible and uh, it's it's absolutely true so so much of that is is driven by exactly that which is a shame because i think it makes sense in other times and other societies that you're afraid of your survival but a lot of us don't have to be it depends on where we live of course but a lot of these fears are just they're not needed anymore yes a little bit people prefer security and stable income rather than real happiness society is making you I believe having a lot of money is happiness. Yeah, and of course, it's not as safe as you'd think often. Um, so I think it's it's very much an illusion. Um, 
but the more we talk about it, the more we can show uh, everyone that it is possible to do completely different things. Um, I think maybe we can manage to strengthen that and just make it more possible for people to go other ways. I like the pleasant atmosphere here in the stream. Yes, me too. Thank you, Andreas says. Absolutely. That's why I love doing these streams too. It's because of you guys. I was reading Walden earlier. Oh yes, I read that by Thoreau. And there's a part where he talks about just sitting in nature, forgetting time, about his days not being ruled by a clock. Oh yes, uh, what day of the week it is. Oh yeah, I remember reading Walden. <laughs> Hi, all together. Hi, Insta. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, I, I remember reading Walden and thinking exactly the same things. Um, that is a very inspirational book. I can hardly recommend that, too. Uh, that is exactly the mood. I agree with the fear statement. I've noticed that as well, that people are just fearful about me not finding my way. Yeah, it, it, it helps just to be calm, loving, and understanding. Absolutely, it does not help for people to freak out on your behalf that you're not going to be able to <laughs> to live <laughs> uh, on your own it's just it's not helpful it would be very nice for people not to do that i would love to ditch my clock as soon as we move to nature and <laughs> clock is like a prison yet to live with the sun absolutely but i mean i think it is a bit helpful to think that well, that's where people are coming from. So you don't necessarily have to take them that seriously. Um, it's not that they don't want you to do other things. It's just, that, well, they're scared. And um, leave them with their fear. Uh, that's not easy, but uh, I think it, it, it does help a bit. Um, and of course, sometimes it can be quite scary for others because uh, it's going to challenge their way of living too. is waving well i would click wave back here but i'm afraid to uh to uh touch my screen too much so uh, <laughs> but I, I i can see you waving that is one of the things that i absolutely i mean it's nice sometimes to just uh painting quiet but that's not why i do these streams uh, and the what i like the most is exactly this when we get into these kind of topics and uh, yeah just open up a little uh, space here to talk about these things that's uh i always find that that uh, that always leaves me uh, happier when i leave these streams i read another book lately where it's talked about that everything comes either from love or from fear now uh, there's duality between these two Seeing it as fear helped me to be compassionate to those who are fearful for me. Yeah, I, th I think that that does help. Um, and I mean, I've noticed that now, as I said, uh, that so many people are incredibly supportive now that I can live off of that. Um, and of course, I wish kind of sometimes to say to them, well, you could have been more supportive before, but well, yeah, so, so much just comes from that, from that space. Um, and, I mean, it's understandable to a degree. I read that too somewhere myself, says, just the other day. Yeah, I just, I think we live in such a... Um, I mean, it does depend on where you live, of course, but uh, most of those of us who live in more affluent countries, it's just, it's, it's really, it's not, and even those who don't, it's, it's not, this fear is not uh, required anymore, um, if it ever was, um, and it is time to realize that, that we, we don't have to <laughs> be that, that, that scared all the time, and I think it's still sits in us. Uh, 
I do remember how people looked at me when I told them that I was going to live off of selling porcelain and glass paintings of trees. Um, most people were, <laughs> well, well, they tried to be understanding, but uh, they just couldn't really wrap their minds about that being possible, having not having seen anyone else do it. So, yeah, just understanding that people might not be able to understand it until they see it in actually happening. I sometimes always feel like it's like they are threatened by us who don't fit into 815, and so they put pressure out. That can be a part of it too, of course, absolutely. Yes, M, and that fears only for things from the past or future. Bye. I have to go with our dog balloon now. Uh, oh, that's Andreas' balloon. Now I get it. Oh, bye. And uh, I'm glad you joined the stream. And uh, I'll uh, see you later in another stream, I hope. I actually have to go soon, too, because we are invited over to Lena's mother, who has uh, actually moved here for the time being. Oh, oh oops. So I am going to give everyone a chance to uh, say goodbye while I clean my brushes. I like to not end these streams too abruptly. So we are invited for dinner and I'm going to put up the... Uh, well, I have no space here. <laughs> well, let's see if I can. Uh, so we're invited to dinner at 6. So I have to do it now. But I'll do it like this. And I'll just clean my brushes and give everyone a chance. So I'm so glad that you guys could join me now and uh, for our conversation. And uh, I'm always happy when we manage to get a little bit of a conversation going. And uh, yeah, this this community. And I hope that can, can, can help as well. Thanks, Joachim. Grateful for the conversation. Bye. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for a valuable and kind conversation to all of you from Elizabeth. Myself, yes, thank you. And yeah, thank, thank you all for, for joining me here. And hopefully we can, uh, yeah, we can all support each other. Always grateful to see you live. Have a nice evening, Amk says. Uh, thanks for your time, Plant Pantry. Well, all right. Well, and thank you for this, uh, for this live stream. It was really nice, and I hope to see you in the next. Goodbye.